Hi VC, Dale Gant 433 here. Um, this is just a quick vinyl finds update as my inbox is overflowing somewhat and I want to create a bit of space by filing some records away. So I've picked five that I've probably listened to and absorbed enough to, 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 to have a quick talk about. Um, so starting off, this um, is a, a long time want lister. Um, so this is Troupeau Blue um, by Cortex, a uh, French band. Um, this is from 75, yeah, 75. Um, and um, I saw this years ago. Um, Fred, Big Star 1000, I think, showed it. And I kind of listened to it on Spotify and, and really liked it. Stuck it on my want list. Um, no, not much chance of getting an original. There was a kind of deluxe reissue that I was interested in, but it's just gone up and up and up in price. So this came up it was on ebay um at juno records it was 17 pounds um, delivered so i thought okay I'll, I'll, I'll plump for that and it actually sounds pretty good actually so i'm really happy with the, the pressing um so what is it it's i don't know mid 70s um jazz funk i suppose um french singer french you know so it's got a female french singer some keys keys going on and some sax and um, bass um you know and it's, and it's pretty funky jazzy um so yeah really really good record so been after it for a long time and um really happy to have a copy so that's cortex's troupeau blue or bleu shall i say <clears throat> this i think i've shown on a, some kind of thread video before but um this is um a, a, an album by rainbow folly um, they did an album, a one one album in in the sixty eight, I think it was late certainly late sixties psych album, pop psych, um, and um, then did nothing, um, and this came out um, as a kind of a bit of a private press limited edition. It's a five hundred. I've got uh, three five seven or five hundred. I picked it up at a record fair from the from the guy who runs this this record label, um, Footprint Rep, Footprint Vinyl. Um, so it's on Footprint. Footprint Vinyl is a record shop in the uh, um, uh, not too far away in the West Country, um, and um, <clears throat> yeah. So um, I got a copy from him at the record fair, and we kept it sealed for ages because I wasn't sure, and it, and it seemed to be going for quite a lot of money on, online. So I wasn't sure whether I'd, I'd like because this came out 48 years, um, 2016, 48 years after the original. The band got together and did this. So I was a bit mm, not sure about that. Um, but then finally I listened to it online and finally thought, oh yeah, this actually sounds good, so I've cracked the seal and I'm keeping it. <coughs> I've also bought a, um, <coughs> I've done a three CD box on Cherry Red Records, which um, is there, is the original album from 68 called Sally's Fourth. Um, some um, additional material, um, a load of radio jingles they did, and this album digitally in a kind of th three CD clamshell box. Um, so that's quite interesting. So I'll show you the <coughs> I'll show you the artwork. So, so that's the artwork of the original album. So as you can see, that is typical sixties pop psych, fantastic artwork done by um, is it John. What's he called? John Dunsterville um, did the artwork. He's he's in the band, and he did this artwork with his wife. Um, <coughs> oh, well, sorry, it says John and Jane Dunstable, I'm assuming it's his wife. Um, so, yeah, this is really interesting. This is, this is you know, 19, 2016 version of, um, of you know, it's, it's a pop psych record. Um, and I think it sounds really good. Um, you know, I was, say, a bit worried that 48 years later they wouldn't, um, they wouldn't have the chops, but, but it sounds really good. And... <laughs> I found quite interesting. So this came out in 2016, four years ago, and it's got a strap line at the bottom that says, we all thank Zoom for a great interface between old musos and new technologies. So it seems like the band members got together and managed to kind of make this record with the use of Zoom four years ago. And, you know, given what's gone on this year, how many, <clears throat> how many sort of records are we going to see coming out in the next year or so that are going to have the strap line that... You know the band basically had to get together over zoom or social media in order to make a, a record during lockdown while well, this happened four years ago by a bunch of uh i guess 60 odd year olds um in order to kind of um do a follow-up to their 60s album anyway okay next one we're moving on to some what is it jazz i suppose we'll call it jazz so this is um uh 
alabaster de plume, which is, I guess, is a non de plume. Um, um, it's a kind of instrumental jazz record. Um, the guy is a saxophonist, and um, I had this on order, and I was really sort of looking forward to it. I had sampled it online a bit, and I thought, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll go with this. And it's on um, International Anthem, and it's been it's kind of a label that I've been wanting to try something from. So I bought this. It had some reasonable reviews. And then while I was waiting for it to arrive in the post, I saw Roger Coleman, who's a kind of, um, you know, uh, one of the uh, one of the greats, the grandees of the um, vinyl community, was doing some record finds, and, and this came up, and um, he didn't like it at all. Um, and uh, I thought, oh dear, I've got this. That's about to arrive in the next couple of days. And um, what, so, and obviously, Roger Coleman's a proper musician. I've got no musical um, ability whatsoever. So, I was, but what he was saying is, so he's a sax, plays a saxophone, but he's got a very breathy, breathy. Um, way of um, playing which I appreciate um, uh, is you know it could be um, sort of not to everyone's taste um, and I quite enjoyed this and some tracks I really enjoyed but I do get what Roger meant you know this this could be a little bit marmite in terms of um, the style um, which I hadn't picked up on when so when I sampled it but when you listen to a whole record um, it can get a little bit much if you're not in the mood for it but um, overall good listen with a nice nice cover art Okay, a couple more to go <clears throat> to some more conventional territory now. So I picked this up. Um, I know Richard McCook showed this the other day. Um, I was thinking of getting it anyway. I remember I quite enjoyed, I quite enjoyed this record when it came out in two thousand and five. I've got a, got it digit had it did had it digitally got it digitally. Listened to it quite a lot back then. I thought it was a good kind of rocking Rolling Stones album. You know perfectly okay you know obviously not 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 setting the sky you know setting the things alight but um so um you know Rolling Stones have been reissuing individually a lot of their back catalogue that previously they'd done in at a studio's um album's box set um <clears throat> of otherwise previously quite hard to get hold of um because they came out in the sort of 90s and the noughties and therefore very expensive to get the originals so this was the only one I was really interested in um so you know for me um, I've got the originals up to tattoo you or originals or already got reissues up to tattoo you and I was not really interested in anything beyond there apart from this and I played this I think it's really really strong a really good album um so um yeah I was really happy to pick this up so it's a big call it a bigger bang if you don't know um from 2005 um yeah and it's just a good Rolling Stones album Okay, and finally, this has probably been going to get a lot of sort of showing on the VC. So this is the latest album by Krang Bin. Um, so they've kind of been fairly big in the VC over the last year or two. Um, I've got their previous album. Um, this is called Mordecai. Um, and yeah, it's it's a nice album. Um, enjoyed it. So this I got. So this was one of my rare ventures to my local record shop in Winchester um, to see Alex and um, we got him to put this aside for some reason I thought I'd get the you know the Indies Indies edition um, on the clear pink vinyl even though I favour black vinyl but I thought I'd do that um, obviously also helps out a record shop by buying it from there rather than getting it from an online retailer um, yeah, it's good. Um, it's it's a lot more vocal. There's, so their previous album had a lot more instrumental and very little vocals. It was more mainly just background sort of vocals. This has got more, um, if you like, um, vocals at the front and um, only a couple of instrumentals on it. Um, but it works. Um, you know, there's only one track that I struggle with. Uh, can they say the fast? Which um, has got kind of a, a spoken sequence over it which i don't i don't understand what what what, the, what they're trying to say and why they're saying it there must be some backstory that i'm not aware of um and therefore it doesn't quite work for me because i don't quite understand what they're on about it's okay but it's just kind of not the best um the rest is all fine um and uh yeah so i quite enjoy it i mean so i did have some reservations i've heard some sort of fairly mixed re reviews of the pressing um and um and particularly the you know, some of the colored version variants pressing so i um um I kind of bought it with trepidation um got back gave it two cleans but actually uh, this one no problems with it so i'm happy um and yeah it's a solid record it's not the best record i've got this year but it's you know it's 
it's a it's a good uh, mid table solid solid out um and very very good summery chill um so um it's still got that kind of instrumental vibe going on of that kind of what are they they're kind of psych funk soul jazz rock <laughs> um mix that they do um it's got that going on so it's a it's a really good um summer chill album okay so that's and that's just five that i wanted to get out of the way um uh, so i can file them away so um yeah take care cheers bye